a very simple way in Final Cut Pro to achieve a white balance is to use the balance color tool. What if you got a shot that felt a little bit too, you know, in this case, a little bit too red, but it wasn't supposed to be. This is an extreme example. So I just want you to know, I just want to show you how powerful balance color is. Uh, this shot here, as it sits, it has a really powerful red overtone. And you can see that just on the RGB parade, how strong the red is through the, the shadows, the midtones, and definitely the highlights. There is green and there is blue, so those other colors are present, but the whole scene is just saturated with red. So if you ever want to just really dial in the white balance or the balance of the shot, you just select your shot, go to modify, click balance color, or you can press option command B for balance color. And at any point you can just click on this to balance color or match color. You just click on it and it's the same as going to the menu up here. And this will apply an effect right away. And it's not doing the thing that I needed to do in this shot. It's trying to gently and automatically try to figure out what, what's happening in the scene. But I want to white balance this shot. So with your shot selected, go over to the effects panel on the under video, click on balance color, and then the method used, change that from automatic to white balance. So right now it resets it. It's waiting for you to give it input. So by this being highlighted blue, you can go and then click a portion of the scene that you think should be white. So I just chose the wall, but that's not a good representation because it's one pixel that I was trying to click from. So you can actually click and drag a whole section to get a better portion of what should be white. If you want, you can start choosing other portions to find that, that good balance. So right now I'm trying to force Final Cut to make that wall white. That wall should be white in, is in, in this example. But that changes the color of everything else. But then when you look over here, the reds are just being literally eliminated from the shot. So it's not necessarily what we're looking for. And if I select just that portion, if I select just the wall, you can see that the red, the green, and the blue, there's no color variation in that. It thinks it's white. And if you look at the vector scope, it's in the center. So I forced Final Cut to make that essentially no color. It's, it's white. That would be white balance. So if I boost it up and boost it down, it's just going to be on the white and gray scale. But that doesn't mean that they're, the whole scene is white. I'm just saying that I know that that wall needs to be white, so I brought it back to white. Again, this is an extreme example. And just to show you that it's crushed all the reds down. It's, it's forced it to be white. And the only way to make the whole scene balanced and everything equal here is if you remove all the colors and then everything becomes on the grayscale. Everything becomes white, essentially. But that's not what we wanted to do. Again, this is an extreme example and I just wanted to show you how powerful that tool is. And we're going to click right in the center of one of these lights because I want to show you that technically we're going to click right in the center of that light. And what it does across the board, it essentially removed the color cast and it made everything a little bit, a little bit cooler. But if I stretched it even further and added more of the shadows and the light, now you see that it's become a cooler cast overall. So you have to be careful and just choose what you feel should be white in the scene, not everything. I want this portion to be white. So choosing where you select it becomes very important. Again, this is an extreme example and you wouldn't use it for extreme examples like this unless you wanted to really dial in the look you're, you're going for. Because you don't want to make everything colorless, you just want it to be white balanced as those exposed correctly. So this is another case where I'm just using a clip from one of my shoots and I expose the camera to what these lights are, but because you never know exactly that a light is saying that it is, you know, 5600, because when you actually take a light meter to it and you do a color temperature, they're usually off. And that's what the 95% or 97% CRI actually stands for. So it gets close, but it's not exactly that. So it's just rated generally in, the, in a specific light. 
the more expensive lights and the better lights are definitely closer to what they recommend, but it all depends on, do you put diffusion in between the light source? Are you bouncing it off of a completely white source? Are, there's a whole bunch of factors that, that are coming in. Is there other lights that are different colors that are all spilling onto the subject? So being able to just take balanced color very, very simply. So in this case, I'm just gonna select the white hat because I know it needs to be white. So I'm just gonna go over a good chunk of it. And you can see that there's definitely a red cast and there's more green than there is blue. And for that to just be white, there needs to be that balance. So somewhere there is a cast coming from it. So I'm just gonna add in, I'm gonna go to modify, balance color. And balance color just automatically also tries to raise the values. So be careful of that if you just leave it on automatic. So you can see that it's trying its best to do it. I typically don't use balance color on automatic because there's no control. It's just trying to do whatever it wants to do. So I'm just going to turn off the crop. But you can see that it's already working a little bit better, but it's blown everything out of proportion. So I'm gonna to go to white balance. It drops it back down to what it was before. I want this portion of the hat because I know it needs to be white. That's the main light that's light in the face and everything. So everything, I want this light to be white balanced. So the skin tones are going to be represented in a truer way than if I went over here because there's two separate lights. There's a light behind me and there's a light in front of me and they have their own color cast. So I'm just gonna click on the front of the hat and you can see that this portion now if I take the crop tool again and just go into that section, just that one portion, you can see that that is now truly white. And if you want a little bit more because there is some color cast, you can make a larger selection, but at that point it's not gonna change it more. So if I went here and, and did that, it changes the color overall. So that way I know that that is supposed to be white. And again, I have a white desk, so I can choose that. I also know that portion of my screen should be gray, so I can select that. There's lots of different things, so, but if you choose something that is a blue and you try to select that, it's going to make this gray and everything else is going to get out of whack. Or if I went to this tungsten color, it would make it would try to make that white and then you see what else it does. It adds this blue cast over everything. So make sure you're choosing something that is white or should be on a gray scale for the best results. So white balancing is really simple in Final Cut Pro with balanced color. I recommend using the white balance tool, not the automatic. And you don't have to find something that's white in the shot. It can be something that should be gray, something that should be true black, or something that is on that white, gray, and black spectrum. So on a gray scale, essentially. Ideally, whoever shot everything did take a moment and film a gray card, which would allow you to balance that first shot within that scene. And then you can just copy and paste those balance settings onto every other shot. A simple way to white balance your shot really quickly. And if you're ready to learn Final Cut Pro in under 30 days, check out Enhanced Editing. With over 10 hours of lessons, focused on everything Final Cut Pro has to offer to help you master your craft and elevate your story. The link is in the description. As always, thanks for watching.